Hello, everyone. It is my pleasure to talk about the very important topic of protecting shared data with a scalable, confidential artificial intelligence. My name is Stefan Gera. I'm a research scientist with Bosch Research, and I'm being joined by our great partners, Scott Rayner, a security solutions architect with Intel, and Moritz Eckert, chief architect with Edgeless Systems. Today, we're addressing an important problem that many modern companies are facing. How can I bring together large collections of data with privacy regulations such as GDPR? Specifically, we are targeting front video camera images and videos for autonomous driving. As our secure and scalable solution requires a large stack of technologies, we teamed up with Edgeless and Intel to implement a proof of concept, of which we will also show a demo at the end. But first things first, let's look at the root of this problem. Data is usually seen as the new oil, meaning the more data a company has, the more valuable it is. The more use cases you can realize, the better your models become, or in short, it can be extremely well monetized. But in recent years, data has also been seen increasingly as something that can be dangerous. So Bruce Schneier phrased this very well as data is a toxic asset. Or in other words, if you have a lot of data, especially when it's privacy relevant and contains personal identifiable information, you have to be very careful not violating any current or future privacy laws. It's a very complicated topic, and it is increasingly complex the more data you have. One of these big data sets that we are collecting are for the development of automated and autonomous driving systems. In this particular example, the images and videos from a front video camera of a car. You can see one of these images here on the right-hand side. A car is driving through an urban environment and clearly records personal identifiable information, such as several persons and license plates. Now there's a couple of questions. How do we treat this kind of uh, data with PAI? How do we label it? Can we transfer it to other countries, to other companies? How do we store it long-term? How do we use it for training? And these are all very complicated questions to answer. And in order to analyze this, let's have a look at what the European GDPR is saying about this. The European Privacy Regulation, the GDPR, states that you need a lawful basis for processing data with PAI. And then it opens the door for two routes that you can take. You can either get the consent of all data subjects, which is unfortunately very unrealistic for our use case. Just imagine driving your vehicle through an urban environment and having to ask every single person for your permission to be recorded. This is clearly infeasible. Fortunately, there is another path for a lawful basis, and that is legitimate interest which is something that we can clearly argue because we are actively developing a system with data collection. But there is an addition here. There cannot be a less privacy intrusive way to achieve the same result. Or in other words, you have to do everything you realistically can to protect the privacy of the data. A very fitting approach for this least privacy intrusive way are privacy preserving computing technologies, such as trusted execution environments like Intel's SGX. We, Intel and Edgeless Systems and Bosch, developed a solution that can help to allow for this least privacy intrusive storage and processing of autonomous driving data. And this brings three great benefits. First, it implements confidentiality, privacy, and integrity of code and data. It minimizes privacy risks for each data subject that is part of the data set. And ultimately, it reduces the legal risks for a company with regards to the according privacy regulations. With this in mind, we started brainstorming about a confidential AI pipeline with the goal of training a neural network using data that potentially contains PAI. In the process, we developed the six-stage pipeline that I will now introduce shortly on a conceptual high level, and then we will dive deeper into the technologies we use to implement this pipeline. At the end, we will round it up with a demo. Our pipeline consists of six atomic steps, acquisition of images, transmitting them securely, de-identify images, store images, label images, and finally train a neural network. Let's go through these, uh, this process step by step. We start with one of our vehicles that records images of a front video camera. Here in this example, we can see a person and a license plate that could be considered personal identifiable information. Therefore, the car sends the image via an encrypted channel in the transmission phase. The image is being sent to a trusted execution environment, and our implementation that would be Intel SGX. This protects the raw image from any unauthorized access, and furthermore, the car can remotely attest the integrity of the enclave. 
Within the trusted execution environment, we are now doing the de-identification of the image. We are using a neural network to semantically identify the pixels in the image that should be considered PLI. We are using that mask to effectively split the image into two parts. A privacy-relevant one, here depicted in the top part of the pipeline, and everything else in the bottom part of the pipeline. Now the trusted execution environment can store the PI part of the image in a secured or encrypted database, whereas the non-PI part can be stored without any tight security requirements, for example, in an unencrypted database. The important thing to notice here is that the vast majority of the pixels in these images are non-PI relevant, and most images do not contain any PI at all. When it comes to post-processing, the data, the data we can see the first big advantage of this method. Because the lower part of the pipeline doesn't contain any PRI, we have a lot more freedoms when it comes to storing, processing, and sharing the data. For neural networks, we need labeled data for training, which can be quite expensive when you do it in-house. But because we de-identified the images, we can let, for example, an external labeling company label the images in the unencrypted database. This yields very precise and cost-efficient labels, which we can also store in the unencrypted database. After we're done with the labeling, we have everything that we need to train a neural network. This is the second part where this method shines. Just like the de-identification inference, we are doing the training in a trusted execution environment. We can therefore access the encrypted database and pull both the PI and non-PI part of the original image. Within the secure enclave, we recombine them now into the original image. We can do the same thing for the labels, and now we have everything that we need, and we can start training the neural network. The huge advantage here is that we are actually using the original images. Other met methods propose something like blurring the PI parts of the image, which might not be desirable, especially for safety-critical use cases like automated or autonomous driving. This was an overview of the pipeline on a high level, and now we can have a closer look at the technology stack we used to implement this pipeline. Let me hand over to Scott to introduce to you Intel SGX and Grameen. Thank you for the introduction, Stefan. As Stefan has already talked about, privacy-preserving computing technologies are very important for securing data, because when you share your data, you share your exposure as well. Now more than ever, people share sensitive data like medical records, banking information, and other personal proprietary information, such as Bosch's ADS data, that needs to stay encrypted no matter where it resides, from your on-prem data center, to the public cloud, to the edge. Common security measures typically protect data at rest and in transit, but often fall short of protecting data while it is being actively computed in memory, possibly the most challenging important step in a fully encrypted data lifecycle. That's why confidential computing is such a game changer. Confidential computing is an emerging industry initiative focused on securing data in use. These efforts can enable encrypted data to be processed in memory without exposing it to the rest of the system, dramatically reducing the potential for sensitive data to be exposed while providing a higher degree of control and transparency for users. Intel is uniquely positioned to help customers ramp up confidential computing with tools like Intel's Software Guard extensions or Intel SGX. Intel SGX running on an Intel Xeon scalable server empowers application developers to encrypt code and data in memory. Unlike full memory encryption technologies that leave the data within the attack surface of the OS and cloud stack, including the virtual machine manager or hypervisor, Intel SGX allows a specific application to create its own protective enclave with a direct interface to the hardware, limiting access and minimizing the overall performance impact for both the application and any other virtual machines or tenants on the server. Only Intel SGX offers such a granular level of control and protection of code and data. Besides helping to protect from other software running in the system, SGX also helps protect from hardware-based memory bus snooping and cold boot type DIM attacks by encrypting and decrypting the data as it leaves and enters the CPU. Finally, Intel SGX also provides a hardware-based app attestation capability that allows the attestation of a remote SGX enclave to verify its integrity as well as the platform it's running on before deciding to share any data to the enclave. 
This includes attestation of all the components of the SGX trusted compute base or TCB, such as the CPU microcode, any authenticated code modules on that platform, as well as the SGX platform software components that Intel provides. So how can you take advantage of Intel SGX? In untrusted cloud and edge deployments, there has been a strong desire to shield entire applications from the rest of the software stack and the infrastructure. Developers also want end-to-end -end solutions with a push-button approach. One way to do both of these is by utilizing a lift and shift development model where an entire application and all of its dependencies are placed inside an SGX enclave utilizing a library OS. This model can also make it easier to port existing applications to use SGX, as well as to use other programming languages with SGX such as Python and R. One such library OS that is backed by the Confidential Compute Consortium, or CCC, is called Grameen. Many modern AL ML workloads are available already, including TensorFlow. Bosch utilized this lift and shift model by way of Grameen and TensorFlow for their ADAS application. But what exactly is Grameen? To quote the Grameen website, Grameen is a lightweight guest OS designed to run a single Linux application with minimal host requirements. Grameen can run applications in an isolated environment with benefits comparable to running a complete OS in a virtual machine, including guest customization, ease of porting to different host OSs, and process migration. Utilizing Grameen, an entire application and all of its dependencies run inside an SGX enclave where Grameen provides a shielding layer from the rest of the untrusted OS and software stack. Enabling applications in Grameen requires a manifest defining the required application security policies to be enforced by Grameen. All security critical paths are hardened against eavesdropping and or attacks. Grameen also supports dynamic library loading and integrity checking of the loadable libraries. Finally, with the help of the available Grameen Shielded Containers tool, an already existing containerized application can be transformed into an SGX protected application. So where can you find Intel SGX enabled VMs? Intel SGX is now GA or generally available in Microsoft Azure DCS V3 series virtual machines. These VMs are much more enhanced as compared to V2 series in a number of ways. For example, the 6x increase in number of available non-hyperthreaded cores up to 48 physical cores. The amount of the Enclave page cache or EPC, which is where the memory that SGX execute out of, also has increased dramatically up to 256 gigabytes. The max amount of regular memory also increased to 384 gigabytes. Memory encryption based on Intel Total Memory Encryption Multi-Key, or TMEMK, is turned on by default for each guest VM. And VMs are available with and without local disk, and there's also support for accelerated networking. This is all now in public preview in East US 2, Central US, and North and West Europe. As you can see from this slide, there are quite a few companies out there now developing for Intel SGX, and this is only a small sampling. The top left box shows a number of companies that have pre-built SGX applications already available on the Azure marketplace. The bottom left has SGX products that could be deployed in Azure. On the right are a number of open source solutions. The top three are software SDKs that you can use to write SGX native applications and deploy yourself. And finally, the bottom three are library OS offerings you can use to wrap pre-existing applications, including Grammy and library OS that I've already talked about. And now I'd like to hand it over to Maritz from Edge of Systems to talk about their Marble Run product. All right. Thank you, Scott. Let me now introduce the next piece in the puzzle of our software stack called Marble Run. So where does Marble Run fit in? We've now seen that with Ramin, we can lift our application into secure SGX enclaves. And if our application would be a monolith, we were pretty much done. But following the cloud-native microservice architecture to adhere the requirements for scalability, updatability, maintainability, we have all those individual services. Every pipeline step may consist of individual containers services that all run their own Grameen enclaves. 
And in a cloud native stack, you would have something like an orchestration platform like Kubernetes to manage those individual services. However, the orchestration platform Kubernetes itself is not trusted in our confidential computing sense. So when we were um, deploying our application in the cloud, we were facing all those additional DevOps tasks to orchestrate the confidential part of our application. So in particular, we were facing the challenge of how can one service attest another service and establish a secure mutual TLS connection before transferring data? And then how can we from the outside verify our application that consists of all those individual enclaves that may scale up and down uh, during the lifetime of our, of our deployment? How can we verify them as one concise application? And then we have those usual tasks of providing them uh, with secrets, with configuration through our, our control plane of our orchestration platform. But now this is, is untrusted. So how can we do this in a secure and protected manner? And finally, of course, we want to have the same uh, features as updatability, maintainability of our application that we are used to. So with Marberon, and the idea is that we add an additional component to the Kubernetes control plane that itself runs inside a secure enclave, so can be verified and can be trusted. And then we use this trusted component in the control plane to orchestrate our Vermin enclaves, our secure services, and lift those individual enclaves to an entire confidential deployment that is end-to-end -end secure and end-to-end -end verifiable. So to make this a bit more concrete, let's see how the workflow looks like with Marberon if you want to deploy a confidential application like our AI pipeline. Let's say you have a Kubernetes cluster that runs uh, on ASCII capable machines, for example, in the Azure Kubernetes service. You would first deploy your usual tooling, your usual uh, services, for example, in our case, Kubeflow. <clears throat> you do this by a regular um, uh, using Kubernetes like you always do. And then you install Marberon. It comes with an easy to use CLI. You install it and then you set a manifest. The manifest describes your confidential deployment, describes all the services, how they should be configured, uh, who should talk to who, uh, who has access to what resources, what is updatable, what is not, like your confidential deployment description, if you will. And then you deploy your application by the usual tooling, for example, using a Helm chart, and then your application comes up and it has injected a small sidecar that acts as an agent that calls to the Marberon control plane, provides an attestation statement, is verified by the control plane according to the manifest that we deployed earlier. And then the control plane provides each individual service, each individual enclave with their credentials, their secrets, their configurations. And by doing so, they can then use those credentials to authenticate each other and establish secure channels for communications. And we can securely pass our data through the individual pipeline steps in our deployment. This is the base for our confidential uh, AI pipeline architecture. And I will now get back to Stefan to show you the full picture of the, of the pipeline. Thank you, Moritz. Now we can put together all the technologies and implement our vision of a secure and scalable AI pipeline. We focus on the de-identification and training parts of the pipeline, because these are the parts that involve confidential computing. Firstly, we have to ingest data that is being sent to the de-identification in step number A. Split it up and then send it out in step B. We are using KSERF, which is based on Kubernetes, to do the semantic segmentation of the image. KSERF offers an inference service that is hosting a model. That means you can send an image to the inference service and you get the mask of PI versus non-PI as a result. A separate part is taking care of receiving the image. 
forwarding it to the inference service and using the result to split the image into two parts. Now we store the PI part of the image in encrypted form and the non-PI part in a non-encrypted form and send it to the Microsoft Azure Blob Store. After doing the labeling, we can go to step number C and start the training. Here we use Kubeflow, which allows Kubernetes-based scalable workloads of TensorFlow networks. TF job can be used to achieve the scalable training. It consists of three parts, a chief, a parameter server, and a worker. The chief coordinates the whole process, the parameter server takes care of updating the model and distributing it, and the workers compute the gradients needed to update the model. All of these are completely scalable. Each one of them is running inside an SGX-enabled Grameen-based pod that is managed by Marble Run. This allows them to securely communicate with each other and protect the confidentiality of their data and code. The workers pull images directly from the encrypted and unencrypted database, hence the PI parts are always protected. Everything in this pipeline is completely scalable. For example, if we have a lot of cars sending images, we can scale up the amount of inference services. If we have to train large networks or have large amounts of data, we can scale up the TensorFlow jobs. Let's have a look at this in practice. Let's imagine this situation. One of our test vehicles is driving in an urban environment. We want to record all images of the front video camera and store them in the back end. Now we get to a crossing where we would collect data that contains personal identifiable information. In this case, a person looking directly into the camera. We can use our pipeline to find a solution to the goal of wanting to train neural networks using this kind of data. We will run through all six stages and show the technologies involved. Let's start with the de-identification stage that allows the car to send images securely to the enclave. We set up an Azure Kubernetes cluster using SGX-enabled nodes. Let's connect to the cluster using the Azure Cloud Shell. We can get the Kubernetes config and merge it into our local config in order to access it using kube control. Here we can see all pods that are involved in the pipeline. We have the predictor marbles, KServe, Kubeflow, Intel SGX, and of course, Marble Run. Now we pretend to be the car in this communication, wanting to send an image to the de-identification enclave. As we are already connected to the cluster, we only have to forward a local port in this case. Normally, we would connect to an external IP. The car is a simple Python script that sends a front video camera image from its file system to the de-identification enclave. It uses a certificate in order to establish a gRPC channel with TLS. The de-identification controller is now receiving the image, forwarding it to the inference service of KSERF, receiving the mask and using it to split up the image. Finally, the PII part is encrypted. Then both parts of the images can be stored on an Azure Blob storage. All of this is happening on SGX protected pods controlled by Marble Run. Once this process is done, the car gets a confirmation from the de-identification enclave. Let's have a look at the results in the blob storage by using the Azure Storage Explorer on the right-hand side. We see two images, one the non-PAI part of the image and the other one the PAI part of the original image. We can see that the non-PAI part of the image doesn't contain any personal identifiable information anymore. The person is clearly cut out and the license plate in the background is not visible and hence doesn't need to be cut out. We can now look at the PI part of the image in the Azure Blob Store. In this example, we didn't encrypt the image so that we can have a look at it directly. The person looking directly into the camera is in the PI part of the image, as well as two persons in the background. There's actually some artifacts in the image, but this can be easily fixed by using an improved neural network. The car or any other entity is also able to verify that Marble Run is running properly. First, with the command marble run status, we can check that marble run is healthy and is able to accept marbles. We can see the response from the coordinator that everything is running correctly and marble run is ready to accept marbles. Now we can verify that marble run is using the correct manifest. 
The manifest is similar to the one of Kubernetes and defines the topology of the cluster, as well as the secrets and the users that can authenticate themselves against the controller. With the verify command, we can compare the remote manifest with our local manifest. In this example, the local and remote manifest are a match. If, however, we use a different local manifest, we will be informed that the signatures are different. This process can be repeated for more images until we have enough data for the training. With the images being separated and stored in the database, we can now generate labels for our images. As this can be done offline, we only have a look at the final result. This image shows the semantic segmentation label of one of the images in the database. Now we have everything we need in order to train a neural network. The PI parts in the encrypted database, the non-PI parts in the unencrypted database, as well as labels for both. The training topology is defined in a YAML file, which can be applied to the cluster. This file basically contains the configuration of our Kubeflow cluster. We can adjust things like the amount of parameter servers and workers, as well as assigned resources per pod. All the pods are Marble Run aware, and therefore will be controlled by Marble Run and run in an XGX protected Grameen container. After applying the YAML file using kube control, we can see that the chief, the parameter server, as well as the worker are being deployed on the cluster. Using the kube control log command, we're observing the activity of the chief in the bottom left corner, of the parameter server in the top right corner, as well as the worker in the bottom right corner. After a successful setup phase, we can see that the neural network starts training and the chief gives us the log output of the current status of the training. We can see how the epochs are progressing and the accuracy is getting better and better. During this process, the workers are pulling the images directly from the encrypted and unencrypted database, recombine them, use them for a training, and then remove them again. This ensures the end-to-end -end protection of the confidentiality of the images. After a few minutes, we see that we finished the training and we stored the final model on the Azure Blob Storage as well. Now we have successfully trained a neural network using data with personal identifiable information. Thanks to technologies such as Intel SGX, Grameen, Azure Systems Marble Run, Kubernetes, KSERF, as well as Kubeflow, we achieved a scalable, distributed, and end-to-end -end protected implementation. Thanks to all these technologies, in the joint work, we have achieved a privacy-aware inference and training of neural networks. We're using fast, trusted execution environment technologies, and we do support TensorFlow models out of the box. Last but not least, everything in this pipeline is completely scalable and distributed. So it is ready for cloud-native and secure deployment.